Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about all the ECG findings of Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. We'll also talk about the causes, the symptoms, and everything else that you need to know. The heart contracts from the atria to the ventricles, meaning that the electrical current generates from the atria and then it depolarizes the atrium and causes it to contract and then descends down a specific path to the ventricles. And this also depolarizes the ventricles after the atria. The ventricles then contract. So as the electrical current travels from the atria to the ventricles, the contraction has to start from the atria and then the ventricles. But in this syndrome, sometimes there will be an accessory pathway. This pathway has less resistance and it favors the electrical current's pathway meaning that the electrical current will travel to the ventricles and causes it to contract before the atria contracts. And this is essentially the cause of Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. In the ECG, we have three specific findings, a short PR interval, which should be less than 120 milliseconds, and then we have a delta wave, which is very specific for this syndrome. And remember that everything that is specific for something in particular like the delta wave that we only see with this syndrome, is very important for exams. Exam makers love to ask about stuff that are unique to certain conditions. And the delta wave is very unique to the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. It is essentially a slow rise of the initial part of the QRS complex. Normally, the QRS starts as a sharp jump, but this slow rise is known as the delta wave. And then we have the prolonged QRS interval, which should be more than 120 milliseconds. So remember that we have a short PR interval, less than 120 milliseconds. And then we have a long QRS interval, more than 120 milliseconds. And in between these two waves, we have the delta wave. And these are essentially the findings of the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Like we said before, the cause is an accessory pathway known as the bundle of Kent. This bypasses the normal electrical pathway and causes the ventricles to contract prematurely. And of course, this puts the patient at higher risk of arrhythmias. The important symptoms include palpitation, and this is always a risky sign that the patient might develop arrhythmia at any moment. Chest pain, difficulty breathing, and this occurs because the heart is not very effective in pumping the blood to the lungs. So this inefficiency causes the difficulty to breathe or dyspnea. Also lightheadedness, fainting and fatigue, and anxiety. Most of these symptoms stem from the heart's inefficiency. As when the ventricles contract prematurely, they will contract with less blood than they should normally have. So less blood will be pumped to the body. There are three types of arrhythmias that are prone to happen in this syndrome. The most common is the AV reinterrence tachycardia, which is basically the ventricle contracting while the atria is also contracting. So you will have the P wave occurring within the QRS complex. And we also have atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Both of these occur because the atria has disturbance in the electrical currents. As this abnormal electrical current might re-enter the atria and cause it to recontract again. There are certain medications that we can use with this syndrome, and they have proven to be effective. There are also other medications that are very dangerous and can be problematic to the patients. Both of these groups are very important to know. The beneficial medications include procanamide, and if it doesn't resolve the arrhythmia, we can do cardioversion. And the problematic medications include amiodarone. It's very important to know these two medications. And if all fails, we can just do ablation of the electrical current's accessory pathway. If you close this accessory pathway, you essentially treat the whole syndrome. Our ECG course contains all the changes that can occur in an ECG, and it helps you become an ECG expert, so that you can recognize any ECG that you might come across. The course contains everything that might affect an ECG, all the symptoms, the causes, and of course the treatments. It also has plenty of quizzes to test your knowledge and make sure that you cement these informations and be able to answer any question about an ECG. You can access the course using the link in the description or in the pinned comment.